Why is remnant bushland so important? We all know that it provides habitat for flora and fauna, but it can also protect crops against salinity and acid soil, it can help prevent erosion, and indeed it can enhance property values. These patches of remnant bush in the wheat belt are like islands. It is very difficult for animals to move from one patch of bush to the next. That is why connecting the remnant bushland is so important. So what lives in these precious patches of bush? There could be many hidden treasures here. How do we unlock the secrets? With a motion sensor camera, we can start to record and understand the animals that live here. Not just the native animals, but the feral animals as well. These cameras are easy to use. Anyone can use them. Farmers, landholders, students, community group members. And we can start to record a whole range of information about the presence of animal species. But not only that, some of the most unusual behavior of animals that we don't normally get to see. This is a motion triggered camera, remote camera. In Australia, they're usually called camera traps. Um, Americans call them trail cameras. For this exercise, we're gonna call them a sensor camera um, because they are a camera, not a trap. And that's the key bit there, the sensor. That detects movement of a warm object in front of it. That's a flash, and that's an infrared black flash or low glowing flash. And that's the camera lens just there. This is the sensor camera make that we're going to use for this exercise. It's a Bushnell trophy cam. Here's three different makes. This one is one of the uh, less expensive ones, very capable, called Little Acorn, LTL Acorn. This one is a loophole. It's a 12 volt system. All the others are six volts. This one is top shelf. This is a more expensive one, high quality Reconyx and takes known for its very fast photographs. When you open up the camera, you've got batteries inside. This particular one will take up to 12, but it also operates well on eight batteries. All the images are kept on an SDHC memory card. And over here is your menu and your on off switch for all your programming. So we're into the programming of the Bushnell. The first one is camera versus video. These will take both photographs in camera mode or video clips. I've chosen video. The next one is image size. I'd say it's always a good idea to record as high a resolution as your memory card allows you. And so I've put it on eight megapixels. The other options being three and five. That's about resolution of your photographs. Image format, this is about the aspect ratio of your screen and um, generally full screen is the way to go. Capture number is for photographs. Uh, I've chosen three in this instance, but you might prefer to just do one or two photos per trigger. Infrared LED control, this is, this is the brightness of your infrared flash. Next is camera name, and it says input. You hit OK, and it allows you to put whatever name you like in for that particular camera. Video size, this is the resolution of your video. 1280 by 720 is high definition video. I've chosen high, high def over the lower resolution videos. Video length, 20 seconds is good. Uh, you might want to go up as far as one minute, down to about 10 seconds, but 20 seconds is great. Oh, this rain's great for the birds. Interval gives you a resting period between each video or photograph. And um, we find that a, around 10 to 15 seconds is ideal. We've got this set to 10 seconds. Sensor level, generally in the warmer months, you'll have problems with false triggers caused by moving grass, leaves, all that sort of thing. And uh, the hot, windy weather can be a real problem. So we need to turn the sensor level down low. Um, 
normal is, is good in winter, and if it's very still, cool conditions, you might even want it on high. The alternative with these cameras is auto, and that works pretty well too, but in, in hot weather, hot windy weather in summer, that might be um, a bit problematic. Format, you've got to be very careful with this. If you hit format, you'll delete everything that's on the memory card. But at the same time, if you once you're sure that the memory card's clean, has got nothing valuable on there, it's a really good idea to format each memory card to each camera when you start using them. So I've just formatted this and I recommend you do the same, but always remember it's going to delete anything on that card. TV output, PAL is, is our system here in Australia, so I've selected PAL as opposed to NTSC. Next function is timestamp. This puts a time and date label on each photograph or video. Once you've made any changes on this programming, it's important to hit the OK button just here, and that locks in the change. Next one is set field scan. Field scan just allows you to take photographs at set intervals regardless of the triggers. It'll also take photographs with the triggers, so that's maybe handy for some situations, but we rarely use it. So we've turned that off, and we're going to the next one, which is coordinate input. This allows you to put GPS coordinates into your camera. We're not going to worry this time, so it's off. And the next one is set video sound. That's always good to have on. And remember what some people say, having um, an audio recording of your animal can sometimes be almost as good as having a video recording of the animal. So always set video sound on is my recommendation. And default allows you to reset the camera back to factory settings. Um, that can be handy at times, but to be honest, most of the time you shouldn't need to do that. And that brings us back to camera versus video mode. And finally, whenever you're taking the memory card in or out, it's important to turn the camera off. Now you can remove the memory card. Anywhere around here is going to be a really good spot for the camera, especially if we put it covering at least one of the tracks. There are times though when you can get really smart and put it covering the intersection of, of all the tracks and that can be really interesting. And as far as this spot's concerned, I reckon if we put the camera on this tree right here, we point it down that way covering perhaps mostly this path but also a bit of this path, it's a good spot as any. There we go, and we're going to wrap that round a couple of times so that we don't have that strap flapping loosely in the breeze. When you get that happening, sometimes it'll flap across in front of the sensor and give you false triggers that's not very helpful. So we're going to turn that on now. I'm sliding that switch to the middle position. I like to see the display screen light up telling me it's all good, and I'm checking a couple of icons while I'm at it and that's now turned on all the way to the top this red flashing light is your arming light and that's flashing red and personally I always love to see that flashing red before I walk away from the camera there's everybody's got a story about how they found the best spot ever and forgot to turn the camera on before they left there's one other thing you might like to do before you turn the camera on and walk away most of these camera makes come with a test mode function that allow you to see exactly how far away you are when the camera detects your movement. With the Bushnells, test mode is easy. You just slide the switch to halfway, the setup position, close it up, and watch this little red arming light here. It's off at the moment because there's nothing going on. As soon as you move in front of it, the little red light flashes telling you it's picking you up. Now that's simulating, that's simulating record mode. Of course at the moment it's not recording because it's in test mode. 
Uh, many animals like to uh, walk along or perch on the top of a fallen log, so it's a good place to set up your motion sensor camera. We can set up a star picket, drive a star picket into the ground and face the camera in uh, the ideal position in terms of uh, the angle of the log but also the direction of the sun. If you've got a little animal like a, a dunart, you need maybe half a metre to a metre in front of the camera. One of the key things with these cameras is you never know what you're going to get. So what you expect to get, you probably, you may not get. What you don't expect to get, you probably will get sooner or later. The mysteries of using these sensor cameras, it's great fun. The use of baits and attractants can really make a difference. Things like sardine oil, peanut paste or peanut butter is good. And you find that you really don't need much of the actual food. You really, what you really want is the smell. The idea is not to feed the animals and create an artificial situation. The idea is just to bring the animals in for a short period of time and uh, maximise the wildlife that you've got in the area in front of your camera. As with any wildlife monitoring, if you bring in, uh, let's say, a small native rodent animal and with the same attractant brings in a quoll or a tutich, um, you've got a predator-prey situation that normally wouldn't happen. So you don't want to attract predators in where you've got a certain other smaller species of uh, target animal. These granite outcrops and granite hills are really special. They're a, a major part of our wheat belt and they're very, very important habitat for wildlife. What we do here on setting up a camera is get our knife out, a pocket knife or perhaps head shears or something like that and just trim off all the grass and these little weedy plants and then set our camera up. Is you get a lot of flash reflection off the rock so you need the flash on the lowest possible setting. In some cases we even mask over the infrared flash with a bit of black masking tape to soften the light even further. Please remember when you're using your sensor camera that these devices are designed to record wildlife, not people. So be respectful of where you locate your sensor camera and uh, it's the wildlife we want to record and nothing else. It can be really exciting finding out what's in your patch of bush. If you would like more information on identification or some help and advice with uh, sensor cameras, please give us a call at Wheatbelt Natural Resource Management.